Hello and welcome to the Garage Series. My name is Jeremy Chapman. I'm Ryan Jiggett. So Ryan, we've had a lot of great shows over the last year where we've talked about the app model and what it means. We've spoken with people like Jeremy Fake and Richard Dezariga. But today we're going to make the rubber hit the road and we're going to talk about your journey. A long-time developer, now a VP at Nintex, and what it meant to move from an on-prem world into the new app model. Yeah, I'm looking forward to discussing some of our learnings along the way and talk about how we migrated that on-premise code base into the cloud for Office 365. So if you're an ISV or a line of business app developer, even an SI, you're going to want to watch this week's show. But before we get started, let's have a look at today's trivia. True or false, the new app model makes it easier to find and integrate external services within your applications. So stay tuned for the answer at the end of the show. So Ryan, you started the journey at Nintex moving to the new app model. Why don't you describe the transition? Sure. So we were by no means born in the cloud. That means we were a traditional on-premise software vendor. And we were working on top of SharePoint. So you know, a familiar picture to all the developers out there. We had SharePoint farms. We installed our solution on top of that. There's Nintex on both of those web front end servers. And they provided a set of services, API infrastructure. Things like lists, libraries, security, and the likes. And of course, there was SQL data storage sitting beside that. Now, the first thing we decided to do going back about three years was extend what was possible to those on-premise customers. So we started our first foray into the cloud using Azure. OK. Now, what we were trying to achieve there is a way to deliver services faster and more frequently to our customers. So we could connect them to things like dynamic CRM. We could connect their workflows to Yammer could even connect their workflows to other things like DocuSign. Now, that was fantastic, but that was only improving part of our software on a frequent basis. Now, we were putting out updates every three months. And at the same time, the customer was just unable to keep up with that pace of innovation coming out of our software. So you still had an army of people going around updating servers, patching servers, and doing application compatibility testing. So what did the shift look like then moving to the app model? Well, the beauty of moving to the new app models was we could start to evolve the entire platform at cloud pace. And so in the past, where we might have had a set of application pages sitting here being served up to the end user, now we start to move all that out to Azure. And so first thing we had to do was start to look at things like choices between PaaS and infra infrastructure as a service. We had to start to think about the fact that we were going from being a single tenant solution to a multi-tenant solution. So maybe you might want to think about scaling out SQL Server horizontally. You might be thinking about things like Azure Table Storage, or at the same time, any other NoSQL database like Mongo, Redis, or DynamoDB. Right. At the same time, though, we go from this monolithic architecture over here to more of a microservices architecture. So you can think about a whole series of components over here handling things like audit, telemetry, uh, maybe the authentication, for us, managing the workflow, listening for events, taking workflow actions. Now, that's fantastic because it allows us to start to move and evolve those components independent of one another. So we can have different development teams working on different aspects of that platform. Right, so basically you've moved kind of all the stuff that you would have done, that old monolithic environment, up into this cloud. But how does that tie back in with Office 365? Well, the beauty of it is that we can come over here and connect our Azure-based application now into Office 365. So whereas in the past, we had this set of APIs available to us, and we had our application pages hosted within SharePoint, now our application pages are hosted up here in our Azure environment. We're able to serve those down into the Office 365 customer, and instead of talking directly to an object model on the box, we have this REST interface that we can talk to directly or use the client-side object model. And did you have any issues, because I hear this a lot from developers, did I have to make any compromises in terms of the API set, what I can do with the model versus what I was doing in the old on-prem world? Well, obviously, it's not a one-for-one -one relationship. But in this entire journey, we found that we've been able to achieve everything we could achieve on-premise in that Office 365 environment. In fact, to be honest, along the way, there were two properties that we weren't able to set. But because all of this is happening in cloud time, not only our application, but Office 365, we talked to the, the Microsoft team, and within a couple of releases, those properties were available to us, and we were able to go about our business. And there's really a great solution there in terms of giving your feedback to user voice. And we have our own site there so that actual SharePoint developer team can listen to that feedback and actually improve the product like they did in your case for Nintex. Absolutely. So beyond all this, uh, we've talked a lot about SharePoint. What about all the other surface areas that we can expose these applications to? Because I know there are things like OA, where we can expose it in mail, or even in, in Word or PowerPoint or Excel. Have you started to look at that as well? 
Absolutely. Well, the beauty of this model now is because we've moved everything out of that on-box experience, we can start to think about where else it might surface. So for example, if you were to take your classic Outlook application, you had your mail there, we can now take those application pages and serve them straight down into there through the new app model. So for instance, in the past, we might do something like send you an email to an approve a workflow step. Now we can deliver a rich experience in there where you might just have approve, reject, and redirect buttons available to you. Right, and we showed a lot of this on a previous show. Instead of driving somebody off to the SharePoint site to do all of this workflow, I can now stay within my mail client, if that's where I live all day, do all of the approval steps right from that same mail pane directly in Outlook or whatever client I'm using with Office 365. This is really cool stuff, but I know that you want to show us a demonstration. So shall we take a look at how Nintex actually works in action? Sounds good. Let's head to the computers. Okay. Well, we've talked a little bit about just how fast you can deliver applications into this environment with the new right. app model. Let's mm -hmm. see that in action. So here I am in a blank SharePoint site, and I'm going to go add the Nintex workflow application. I simply select add an app. I'm going to be taken into an environment where I can choose from the corporate store. So if you're an internal developer, that's where you're going to find your applications, okay. or the SharePoint store for ISVs. We'll go to the SharePoint store, and we'll get a list of all the applications. And once we've got that, I'm going to go and search for the Nintex application. I'll type Nintex in the search box. We'll get results back. And I'm going to choose to add the Nintex workflow application. Pretty straightforward so far. I'll just click Add it. And then from here, I can confirm that I want to add the app to the site. Right. Now, what's happening in the background is the app's getting registered. And it's going to ask me now if I want to trust the application for use in this environment for all my users. I'll return to the site. And with that, I'll say trust it. And now we've got the application installing. It's going to take a few minutes now. And then we're ready to start building workflows. Excellent. So we've talked about the speed of kind of getting the app into your SharePoint online environment. We've talked about the differences in architecture. but is this app, does it have all the uh, functionality that you'd expect from an on-prem environment being in the cloud? Absolutely. So what I'll do is I'll give you a bit of a compare and contrast. So let's just jump across to a traditional on-premise SharePoint environment. What you can see on the screen right now is Nintex workflow in SharePoint 2013. Mm -hmm. It's a fairly sophisticated workflow. This is an employee onboarding workflow. You can see we've got a lot of steps in there, and it's a rich design experience. Let's just minimize that now and take a look at the Office 365 experience. So here we are in Office 365, and you can see it's the exact same thing. But what gets interesting now is with that employee onboarding workflow, instead of me having manual steps because it's on-premise where I have to tell someone in HR to fill in some paperwork, send it to someone, wait for it to come back, right. scan it, declare it as a record, we're going to automate that entire thing. So what you can see on screen right now is that I've got connections through to other cloud services. We talked about how easy it was to connect to external systems mm -hmm. in Office 365. I'm going to connect to DocuSign in this workflow, and I'm going to make it really easy for people to make this process electronic, digital, end-to-end. -end. That's great. So it's a full digital solution. I don't have to print out envelopes. I don't have to print out paper. I don't have to do all of that work. I can do that all in the cloud and all electronically. Absolutely. So let's cool. see how this workflow operates. I'm going to jump across now. I'm be the hiring manager. I'm the VP of product at Nintex, and I have a list of candidates. Currently, I'm hiring for a director of product management, and I've got a set of candidates that I've interviewed, and what I'd like to do is extend an offer. I got this uh, great uh, candidate here, Jeremy Chapman. So I'm just going to make an offer to him. It's a fantastic salary package, one and a half million dollars. So we'll just <laughs> kick off the workflow here. And we'll see that I've got this option here to send a job offer. So we'll click that, and we'll start the process of sending that job offer. Let's cut across now. Um, I'm in the Outlook environment with an Office 365. Okay. And what you can see here is that job offer has arrived in the inbox. So I'm going to pretend to be you right now. I'm going okay. to say, that's a fantastic offer. I'd like to accept it. Sounds good to me. So I simply click on View Documents. The DocuSign environment is going to pop up. I'll say I want to sign this. We'll click on Start. Simply click on the Sign Here area. We'll adopt and sign. Confirm the signing process. Now, from your perspective as a candidate, it's all done. Normally, that would take an awful long time. There'd be things going back and forward. For me as an employer, maybe I'd lose you during that period to another person who made you a better offer. Uh, but now we can see things progress. So that's really cool to see all of that running. The other thing that's really cool about that is I could log in if I want to right from my iPhone and run through that same approval process because it's all cloud-based. It's all connected, and we have the apps even on the phones to be able to do that. But I know there's one more piece of this workflow that you have in terms of just the internal announcement. Why don't you show us that? 
Absolutely. So what I want to do is make this end to end. You've accepted the job offer and I want to announce it to everyone in my company. So here we are on a Yammer site right now and that exact same workflow has posted an update to Yammer announcing that we've just hired you and that you'll be coming on board in this new role. Cool. So I know there are some gotchas though because we're talking about a lot of great things and the cross device support and really all of the upside I guess to moving to the app model. What are some of the things that you've actually learned along the way that are things that you would give to other ISVs thinking about moving to the model? Sure, so if I had to uh, summarize it, I'd probably wrap it up and look at, at three key areas. The first one is to think about where you host your application. And uh, for a lot of people, they don't take the time to think about where the customer's Office 365 site might be hosted or where their own internal 365 site might be hosted. And right. they'll publish their app into a specific Azure environment. Uh, you know, Early on, we discovered that there were some latency issues in doing that, and we took the time to make sure that our app was located in the right location based on the location of the tenancy. So that's, a, that's one big thing. The next thing is I start to think about security. Now, a lot of people will think about security from the perspective of you know, uh, encryption at rest and encryption over the wire, but the really interesting thing here is that as you move to the cloud, there's a lot more questions to ask about who has access to the data, when they're accessing the data, can you prove it, can you audit it? particularly if you're building applications for other customers, they're going to want to know. And we've seen more and more RFPs and questions coming to us for detailed architecture and understanding our internal processes around how we control access to audit information and telemetry. So that's the second thing. And the final thing is that, you know, while it's great to be able to deliver all this capability in, a, in near real time, build a feature, publish a feature, it's also just as easy to build a bug into your software, publish a bug. And now that bug doesn't just hit one customer or a number of customers over a period of time that you can recover from. That bug's going to hit everyone instantaneously. So you really need to think about having a DevOps team and processes in place to control how you publish those applications, how you might retract them, and how you might fix them when issues come up. Right, so a lot of these sound like familiar topics around any cloud service uh, provider and really ma making that move from an on-premises world into the cloud. A lot of great insights. Thank you so much. Before we wrap up today's show, let's have a look at our trivia. True or false, the new app model makes it easier to find and integrate external services within your applications. So of course the answer was true. You can integrate your apps with third-party cloud services. Yeah, you know, hopefully I've been able to share some learnings along the way, help people see how this can be done, and I hope you look forward to your journey. So, of course, it can be done in terms of moving from the on-premises, the older world, into the app model. All of this information, I'd encourage everybody to look at dev.office.com for more. Also, check us out on The Garage or follow us on Twitter. Thank you for watching and goodbye for now.